Okay, this is take two on part two because part one of part two got lost. All right, so this is the one that I've been working on, but it's not very good now for me to illustrate on. So we're going back to square one. These apples are not f finished and never will be. But anyway, uh, we're gonna, I'm gonna use this one today. Uh, so my pattern is drawn out here. And what we're working with, we're working with Prussian blue. We're working with Prussian blue. I've got it mixed pretty strong. I, I thought I would mention that when you're working with the, the inkier, more staining colors, or just the inkier ones, they're not all of them more staining. Most of them are. Like uh, anything that's phthalo, the Prussian blues, uh, uh, quinacridone rose, for instance, or violet, or... or uh, um, coral, uh, they, they flow. They're very, what I'd call inky, and they, they flow uh, very easily, and so they're harder to control. That's where working on 300-pound paper makes it easier than a harder surface paper. Uh, so I'm also using burnt umber over here. Okay, so maybe that's enough to start out with. And remember not to use your round brushes with the nice points to pull up paint out of your um, out of your palette. Some people even use a, a an old synthetic brush for, and just do just that with it. So I've got these, and then I've got white ink. By the way, Hobby Lobby, when you can get back in there, Hobby Lobby sells this white ink now. It's a little bit hard to find it, uh, but this is the this is the Dr. Martin's bleed proof white. It's the water soluble one that's made with zinc, and that's the only one that I'm recommending. Okay, so I've got those two colors and the bleed proof here. And it's going to take very little of the bleed proof ink. So, first of all, we want to mix that gray. So, we're going to take a little bit of the burn umber and put it over here. Oops, I'm contaminating the burn umber. Well, that'll be a good thing because that means that I have, uh, uh, that I've, I've got the, because I'm going to do that to the burn umber. Okay. So, I'm looking at my gray. It took very little burnt umber to turn that blue into, well, maybe I need just a touch more. I didn't have it mixed in that well. Just get some over here. Let's see. Let's mix it all up. Okay, I think that works. And then on my burnt umber, I would like for it to be toned down just a little bit. So a little bit of blue into the burn umber. Now the advantage of using the white ink, we're, we're using it mostly because I wanted to contrast with the brightness of the apples. And anytime that you have watercolor that has got an opaque in it, it, it will dry duller. So, uh, particularly if it's glazed, which is what we're gonna do. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of white to each one of these. Let's see. Oh, maybe just a little bit more. It doesn't take much white to have a big effect. The thing is that this also slows the inky colors down so that they're easier to work with. Whoa, 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 I got too much in here. Well, maybe not, you know, we'll see, we'll see. 
Now from here on out, if I want to make a color lighter, I don't add more ink to it at all. I just add more water, just like I normally do with watercolor. In fact, I think I'll take this out of here because I'll probably need this space in a little bit. And I'll show you why when I get there. Okay, so let me make sure I've got all of this back in place correctly. Do, do, do. Okay, good. So the thing with this, this, this part could get kind of tedious. Uh, I, I'm actually preferring to use a round brush for this part. And let's just see how dark this color is. Uh, got a little thing here. Okay. Yeah, that's about right. I've got a little extra water on my brush. Now, what I'm going to wind up doing later is actually going over this and weakening it with, uh, Mr. Magic. So... Um, here. Now, you could see this. This one is a whole lot lighter. Well, so was another one I missed. But anyway, uh, this, this, this little spot right here is a whole lot lighter. So the way I get that lighter now is I just add more water to it, just like I do any other time I'm working with watercolor. I don't want more white ink in it. I just want it to be lighter. So I could do that. Uh, when I get to this brownish color, what I've chosen to do is use the burnt umber. I could have made it a little redder, but uh, remember that when you add, uh, you know, you don't know this. Those of you that have worked just with uh, watercolor and haven't used oils or acrylics much, uh, you don't have the experience of mixing white in. But what happens is when you mix white into a color, you change the hue of that color. Uh, when we work with watercolor and we just add water to make something uh, lighter, it doesn't change the hue. So I've decided that that's acceptable for me. Uh, we could get something closer, but I really liked that when I did this one. So, uh, I kind of stuck with it. So, let's just come back here and let's do a little more of this. Uh, you don't have to be super neat with this, but if you're a person that likes to work real neatly, uh, it'll look good that way, too. In fact, um, yeah. There's particularly not a right or a wrong on this other than that you're just filling in spaces. Down under here, there's a block and I, I am careful when I get right around the edges of the apples. And here's the other thing. I'm winding up not getting this just like the pattern. I've, I've got a lot of mistakes in here. I don't feel that it hurts anything at all. Don't worry if you make some mistakes on this pattern. This, that'll just ruin the, the pleasure of painting it if you get overly concerned about it. Okay, one, oh, just a little bit more there, and then I'm going to stop this and do some 
other stuff to it. And I want to show you something neat. Because I made a little discovery, something I never thought about before when I was working with this. Let's go ahead and let's get this in over here. I think I'll, I'll need that for the demo. I'm just going to paint as much of this as I need to demonstrate what I want you to see. Okay, so I'm going to need to dry that, but let me show you this thing, because I thought this was really cool, something I never noticed before. There's this thing, I think it's called chiaroscuro or some kind of thing like that. It's where you have dark over light and light over dark in the same painting, and it does this, this neat thing to your brain. Uh, well, I had something similar. Let me see if this shows up. I had something similar happen to this in a different way. See, we've got the bright over the duller here, so the apples really stand out and come forward. When you get down here and you look at this, you see how the apple kind of disappears? Because even though it's still colored, and it has some brightness to it, this pattern, which is sitting right now on pretty much white paper, takes over your, your visual part of your brain and the apple disappears and this then the background comes forward very much like chiaroscuro except it's uh it's it's just the pattern that that attracts your eye which i thought that was really cool so okay and down here this of course is not finished i'm thinking about leaving this part like that just because it does that and i like it don't know Okay, I'm gonna dry my paper. Okay, now, my perception of how this ought to look has sort of changed. This is beginning to look too muddy to me. Uh, maybe it's because I like this part so much that I don't quite know what I want it to do. Uh, you know, that happens to us and one of the things that you might take from that is that the picture should evolve as you work on it. If you do something more than once, it will probably change. It should, because you're not an, a, on an assembly line. You're making art. So, let's just take our flat brush here and Make it on the wet side of a neutral brush, which would mean, here, I'm just taking a tiny bit of water off of it, maybe just off of one side. So what I want is, I want some of this shadow over here. But I would like to leave a, this area a little bit whiter than what I did before. See, this just, I'm just adding a little color there into the water and then I'm moving it. So the thing about this is, you, you don't get so many streaks and runbacks and you're not fighting with it so much just because it's got that little bit of white ink in it. See, some water neutral brush, softening some edges. And then right up here at the front of this row, I'm gonna try and soften that edge just a little bit because it'll look more like cloth. Okay, then we have got, no, never mind, I'll wait on that. Let's do, we've got a shadow up here. This is, is this in the frame? Oh, barely. Here. We've got a shadow up here. A little bit of shadow going up that way some shadow right here. Kind of 
kind of does a shape kind of like that. And I have to get to it fairly fast. This zinc in the, in the uh, white ink makes your paint dry a little faster. You know how it tends to dry right there in the bottle when you haven't even had the top off of it in weeks. Uh, that zinc has just got a real drying effect. By the way, it's great in mouthwash too. Not the white ink, the zinc. Okay, so you see there's a little, there's a little bit of shading there. And then let's come in here and just pay attention to how dark some of these areas are. This area between the apples is considerably darker. So nice, I can paint, I don't have to talk all the time. Okay, I sure miss not having y'all asking questions though. Cause I probably won't think of everything. You know, you can text me or call me with questions. Maybe I'll get better at this in time. I think we're in this for the long haul. So, let's soften that a little bit. Okay. There's a crease right here. See, there's a fold, I should say. It makes sort of a loopy little shape right there and right here. Well, I'm trying to use two different brushes for this. And I'm gonna thin out my paint just a little bit over here with a little extra water. Let's see now. So there's a shape kind of like this. Okay. I've got a picture of Shirley Nichols with a brush in each hand and one in her mouth. I can barely keep track of two of them. So here we've got this is another fold. So see what I have done here. What I have done here is that first I put down the pattern. You could do this the other way around, but I think it's easier to put down the pattern first and then to go back and do shading on the cloth. Treat those as two separate things and do them at separate times. I think that really works best. There's also, see a little shading coming right around this where this cloth is you know, buckled up right around the apple. So there's a little darker area there. It's pretty subtle, but it really adds to the feeling that some of this is overlapping that apple and you, you almost can't tell right now. So let's put that bit of shading in here. That'll run into this other stuff. And then water neutral brush again. And remember, this time I say it's really not neutral. It's It's got more water left in it. It takes just a little bit more water to move that ink. I th uh, There, that's what I wanted. Now, I think what, has, what gets you, a lot of y'all into trouble with this kind of thing is that you Press down too hard with your brush. Now I am I'm I'm soaking some paint up here. I decided that wasn't quite big enough. That gives me kind of a graduated edge there too. That's quite nice. Okay, so we've got some shading around here. Time to dry. Okay, 
Now, one thing that I think works really well with cloth and a whole lot of other things is using Mr. Magic and breaking it up and then reassembling it. Sounds almost like a waste of time, but it seems to have a pretty good effect. So, I've got, I've made an awfully small area here. We'll see. So, I'm just gonna come through, particularly maybe where some of the highlights are, and do little things like that to it. So, I think that has a really good effect. I might even just leave that part like that. Be ready to make changes. And this isn't soupy wet. It's, it's, it's damp enough to work, but I don't want to just let a whole bunch of water down here everywhere, especially next to my apples. So maybe I'll pull a little bit through there. Let's, let's make a little bit of a highlight over here. So you can, you can pull back in some of the highlights and it'll look more like cloth, but I also help, think it just helps sometimes to just rough the thing up a little bit. Uh, I don't like that area right there. I'd like to lose an edge on this because it just looks a little too static. So I can make an edge. See, there's actually a little highlight here. That's more, that gives me more of an idea of a place that I might want to do something than that I had to do that, just that exact place. And then let's find a clean spot on this because this is a real light area back here and I might want to keep that light, but I would still like to streak it a little bit. So what I might do, I might blot that area. Let's see. Just some little moves like that can be really good. Make a little highlight coming through here. And then you can actually still you know, get it dry and paint back on top of it and make little changes. But I really like working that way. Uh, now, what did I want to show you? Oh, I got to dry it again. Okay, so now let's put some stronger darks in. And for that, I need to clean out a spot here because I don't want any white in them. And I'm gonna use the same colors. Well, really, I'm just gonna use the, the dark gray. So I'm gonna mix up some pretty strong color. And you'll have strong color if you've had some water setting on it. I have a few people that have a real battle with getting enough paint out, and, and especially paint that's strong enough. It's just, I don't know if it feels wasteful or what, but it seems to just be a fight for them. Uh, but see, this is what I call creamy paint. You can see when you do this with your brush, it flows back in, but see, it'll make streaks that hold instead of like that where nothing happens. Of course, that's not a good example of it. But anyway, you, you can see, see, it's still got streaks in it. Well, that that's where it's concentrated enough. I don't want to use the word thick. Okay, so I'm going to take, you know, my little sharp brush and let's there's a there's a little dark area right in under here that's where almost no light bounces back at you and so it's extra dark So we'll do that. Now we're working, we're working with transparent paint. And okay, so now when I work with it, I don't have the white ink in it. So 
I can use, I'm, I'm gonna use a little less water to blend it. And again, I'm just barely touching the paper. That was the key to these apples too, was very, very low pressure. So what I'm gonna do is another little primer, prim, I don't know what you call it, but a little video on the beginning of an apple, just about getting wet enough for anybody that wants to study that a little closer. Uh, okay, so you see, we got this really dark right there and it looks strangely dark because the apples aren't finished, but uh, you get an idea of the shape there. And then I might go back to my slightly larger round brush. And let's see, where would I, this shadow right here from this apple, I would like for that to be stronger. And in order to do that, I believe I need to make the brown shadow itself stronger, not just the glaze on top of it. See, if you were here, I could ask you if that made sense. Okay, maybe I can show it better and I can tell it. So if I just make this darker with the gray shadow, the gray shadow will overpower the local color of this brown thing. And so I need, okay, I need this to be browner also. So let's put, that's a little too dark so I'm going to take my brush and pull it up a little bit and I want to just soften the edge of the shadow right out here and I could really study this and make this shape really do what the apples do under the cloth there I really don't have the top part of that shape right that's close enough though so I guess we have to stop and drive. You know, there's a problem here. There's a problem here. I'm looking at this, and I I pulled up paint, but when I did, I got it lighter in the middle than I did at this outer edge, and your shadow should never get darker at the edges than it is in the middle. It could get lighter, because sometimes you have a fuzzy edge shadow, but. It shouldn't ever get darker. Okay, well that's a streaky looking shadow. Let's see if we can smooth it out a little bit. If, if you could feel this brush, you, there's just almost no pressure. I think I can't get rid of that little bit of shadow there. I don't know why it's hanging in, but it is. So I'm gonna fill back in I've just got a teeniest bit of paint on this brush. I'm gonna fill back in there. I think that'll work better. I'm gonna dry this. Okay. Now what we need is we need the rest of the shadow that's on the whites. Problem is, the shadow on the whites is still considerably lighter than this. That almost works, but it doesn't work right down here by this apple. So I think in order to make this feel right, I'm gonna to have to do something like that. Whoops, I don't like that spot. Well, if I don't like a spot, I just do this and I fix it. And I want to soften this edge because there's a again an ended you know a lower place in the fabric where the apple is. Mm, I don't know. Let's put in some of this other pattern. 
I don't know if it's going to make me feel better or not. And here's the thing. When you're doing something like this, sometimes it makes you feel better. And sometimes it doesn't. And that's that's how you know that gut level thing, whether whether it's good or not. If you like it, you've made a discovery. I've decided that the words happy accident are, I don't like that. What it is is they're little discoveries because it's not an accident. It may have happened accidentally, but if you go back and look at how you did it, then you can repeat it, and it's no longer accident. So you've made a discovery. Give yourself credit. And you'll discover things that you like, just like I discover things that I like, and they may not be the same. And that's cool. I'm blotting there to lighten, oops, lighten that too much. This is, this needs to be a little darker. How hard you press this tissue makes a difference. Okay, that looks better with the little, um, with the little pattern in it too. I still don't really like this. The other thing is that on this pattern, there are little outlines on a lot of this stuff. And sometimes the outline, here, sometimes the outline really stands out and sometimes it doesn't. And I think that's important. You don't want to do something that is a nice even outline everywhere. So maybe something a little like that or a little thingy like that. We've got a cat's tail here that is a lighter gray. So let's add a little water to it. I've been bothered with these cat's tails on here because that almost looks like a thing rather than like uh, like it's part of the cloth. So what do I do with that? Well, I'll pull in. Well, I'll show you in just a minute. Wait a minute. Okay. Hold on. I'll dry it. Here we are back. Okay. Clean bit of Mr. Magic. He's so magical. Okay. So, it's the same thing. If there's a highlight running through here, the highlight needs to cross over the tail and make a highlight on the tail also. See, that makes them feel more like they are in the same place. I just don't like that, though. I want to weaken that. I'll just smear that one and not blot it. But see, that does a little thing there. I would really like to weaken it right here. And over here, let's, let's weaken that a little bit. Sometimes you want to leave those streaks and sometimes you want to lift an area a little bit. I mean, sometimes you want it to be lighter, and sometimes you just want it to be a little smeary. Or both. See, so that creates a curve in here. The only other thing that I would mention about working on this because you pretty much do that all over. The only other thing that I would mention about that is that here on this one, I did a little bit more lifting with the Mr. Magic in the back so that it, um, to make it just a little bit blurrier so that it was more like it's in the distance. Um, I also wound up coming back and Lift in a few areas in here. 
because I got it a little too dark and I wanted this, this is white fabric, so I kind of overdid some of those shadows. But if it works, it works, so I'm not gonna worry about it. Here's a place, let's just give you a couple more examples of lifting on this. Here's a place right here. See, there's a highlight across here because this is a fold. And so, this is just a great way to put that highlight in. This bow goes up this way. So that kind of makes it, ah, and I see where this could get lighter right in through here too. That looks just a little bit mechanical there. Those are a little too straight, I think. But you can see how it makes it wave. So it's just easier to do it that way. That little tail thing there, see that's standing out way too much. And one way to handle that too is to never blot it and just let it be smeared. So I could come in here again. I might go back over it because you can do this more than once if you're gentle with Mr. Magic. Put a little bit more water there. So I'm almost like pushing down and pulling up like that. Da da da. Like that. Okay. So what that does is that gives you a, a nice lift that's fairly, fairly gentle to do. Maybe I want that a little wider right there so I can do that and blot it. Yeah, see that come forward? So just, I would say, put in your pattern. I kind of needed to put in a little bit of pattern and work on it to reassure myself it was gonna work before I did the whole darn thing. So you might wanna do that, but you're just putting in your pattern first, putting in some shading, lifting some, maybe adding more shading, maybe lifting some more, just back and forth until it comes together. And this 300 pound arches will let you do that. So that's, that's all for today other than that yeah, that's all. <laughs> Bye.